how the e-skills campaign for jobs uh, address, is addressing these issues. Furthermore, we will discover some best practices from companies and we are going to look into how business can work together with schools to um, yeah, really work on uh, aligning the real business needs. Uh, and of course, we have a specific focus today on how we work with teachers because they are a very important partner in all this. Let me just run quickly through the agenda with you today. I will give a brief context uh, explanation of why we came to this point, uh, this webinar and, and what we are doing at CSR Europe. Then we'll give the floor to Francesca Falco from Digital Europe. Uh, they are leading the or coding the eSkills for Jobs campaign 2015 and tell you all about that. Uh, afterwards, we will have Rosanna Bolis from CA Technology and give us the business perspective on how they work uh, in Italy on um, and collaboration with teachers and schools directly on the field of STEM and e-scales. Uh, furthermore, we will follow with a presentation from Silvia Ferrario from our national partner in Italy, Sodalitas, uh, and they will talk or she will talk about how as a third party, you can set up and facilitate school collaboration. In the end, we will have time for some questions um, and try to have a little discussion and afterwards, and that's it for today. So, to we CSR Europe have started the Skill Jobs campaign and our, uh, one of our two big campaigns, uh, our Enterprise 2020 and we try to make Europe a better place for work. We have a target for this campaign to reach 5 million, especially young people, and to equip them with the right skills and the right uh, abilities and opportunities to have a job and to be productive in the labor market. One of our main uh, projects under this campaign is called Deploy Talents or STEM, in which we really try to assess education and help uh, to set up business teacher alliances, promote and bridge the skills gap. In more about this project specifically because that's why we are here today and what we are working on. So with this uh, project we have several practical tools for action. So we Business Network are really trying to help businesses and our national partners and other strategic social partners to work together um, to people get interested in STEM, which is a way for those who are not familiar with the term stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, this is a subject that is very important and people, uh, there's a lot of uh, work in this field despite the high unemployment. So this is a, a gap that we have addressed uh, or that we have uh, found and we need to address this. So the project, we have our STEMPI assessment and benchmark tool, which is a practical tool for companies. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about it in a minute. And then we have a deployer talents toolkit, which is a very practical, uh, practical toolkit for our national partner organizations, uh, which helps to set up uh, business school collaborations. And this is what Jessica, or sorry, uh, Silvia Ferrario will also talk a bit more about as they have implemented this in Italy. We have also, as part of this project, a learning network, and this webinar is one of the things that we are doing in terms of learning networks. We want to share best practices, we want to show what's happening and connect the network to make sure that everybody learns most from each other. And this, we have webinars, but also our business impact map on which we uh, promote best practices from companies around Europe. We have several events, and we, of course, do communication on various best practice uh, aspects. Um, finally, we also engage in a lot of partnerships with leaders in the field. We work together with uh, parties such as the European Schoolnet, Digital to Europe, and also the European Commission. Um, we work with these partners because uh, we can achieve a lot more than alone. 
a big network and we hope to really uh, go further together there. Um, so we we'll, would like to tell you a little bit more about the STEMPI assessment tool. This is a tool that we have been working on in the last years and we have assessed several companies with it. And what this tool really does is to assess the potential impact of companies' STEM projects. So we try to really upscale the impact that companies have in the field of STEM. And uh, to do this, we have developed an assessment which looks on the one hand on coverage. So how many, uh, we have sort of identified elements that you can work on. And uh, in this assessment, we look at what your, your company is doing at um, at what, how, what is the qualitative setup behind your projects. So how did you set up and does that together uh, provide a good basis to have impact on the young people's lives and to have people choose for a STEM career uh, or studies. As you can see in the in the graph uh, on the right side, we have done some research and we have done the assessment so far with 10 multinational companies. And one of the things that stood out from us was that uh, a lot of companies are actually not working with teachers or trainee teachers. Um, as this is one of the key uh, flaws that we identified, we really thought that this is something that we need to work on. Uh, and hence, we decided to focus today on uh, teachers. Uh, before we continue, uh, and before I give the floor to, um, to talk about ESC, I would like to uh, tell you the tool has been received very positively, and we're working together now with companies and our national partners to collect data and to really move forward um, to achieve uh, the best impact that we can. Thing that we will also this tool will also be available for our national partners, so they can uh, we can always talk if you're interested to learn more, because this is of course just a very quick snapshot. Um, uh, yeah, so we can always be in touch, and we're happy to discuss and collaboration. So I would like to give the floor to Francesca, and we'll give you more input on uh, the eSkills for Jobs campaign and why we're working on this. And it's all about it. Francesca, I'm going to unmute you, and the floor is yours. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for giving me the chance to, to participate in this webinar. I'm delighted to present the skills for the jobs campaign, which is an initiative launched by the European Commission and uh, coordinated by us at the uh, Digital Europe and the uh, European School Net, with support of other pan-European partners uh, such as uh, CSR Europe. Between uh, Digital Europe and European School Net represents in itself a collaboration between industry and education, being Digital Europe, the voice of the digital industry in Europe, and European School Net, a network of, uh, of ministries of, uh, of education. I will start providing you with the general picture to understand uh, the political background behind this, uh, this campaign. We know that nowadays uh, a very large number of Europeans are struggling to, to find work. Uh, the latest Eurostat reports from uh, August indicate an unemployment rate of 9.5% uh, in the 28th and a 20.9% among young people. But at the same time, the digital sector is growing rapidly, it's creating more than 120,000 jobs per year, and yet European companies often struggle to, to find people with the, with the right digital skills to fill in these uh, dispositions. It's been estimated that this, uh, they could create uh, a shortage of uh, up to 825,000 skilled workers by 2020. And this is not taking into account that uh, a growing percentage of jobs in all sectors, from uh, agriculture to, to fashion to whatever sector you might think of, will require the use of, uh, of digital skill in uh, the near future. The lack of, uh, of training and skilled workforce is, uh, is really a stumbling block to, to your growth and, uh, and competitiveness. And 
is not only a matter of the traditional digital skills, but it's also a question of developing other skills like uh, digital leadership and also developing IT professionals. Uh, these issues in uh, 2010, the European Commission launched the uh, eSkills Week, a creation of uh, events, uh, trainings, media activities that is uh, raising awareness on the vast range of opportunities that ICT jobs present, and also to highlight the growing demand for, for skilled ICT users and, and professionals. The successful, it was uh, repeated successfully also in, uh, in 2012. The, the campaign was uh, was launched this time under the Grand Coalition for, for Digital Jobs, which was initiated uh, the year before by, by former President Barroso, which is also coordinated by us at Digital Europe. And this time the, the name change became eSkills for Jobs and uh, it uh, became a year-long campaign. In, uh, in the slide, uh, this slide, uh, these three campaigns were, were very successful. And uh, the campaign for 2015 and uh, 2016 built on, uh, on, this, uh, on this big success. You can see numbers are, are quite impressive in terms of uh, outreach and, uh, and dissemination. The main objectives of, uh, of the campaign is, uh, is to provide a pan-European platform for communication and awareness raising on its skills in Europe. Initiative taken by policymakers, industry, and academia to, to promote digital skills, jobs, and training are gathered and made available to, to the target audience. And we, we put a special focus on promoting digital jobs, careers, and training over Europe. This campaign is, uh, is carried out with the support of public authorities, industry, and uh, other relevant stakeholders who are encouraged also to, to carry self-funded communication activities using channels. We are running in, uh, in parallel on, uh, on two levels. We have the pan-European level and we have the national levels. countries are involved in the campaign. Uh, we have uh, 21 uh, national campaigns that are managed by national contacts majority of these uh, contact points uh, belong to Digital Europe Network. We also have partners and uh, stakeholders who are active uh, in uh, three additional countries, which are Portugal, Luxembourg, and, and Switzerland. And targets uh, a big variety of, uh, of audiences. And of course, the communication style, the channels that, that we use to each of these groups. We did, as you can see here, uh, young people, job seekers and unemployed, business leaders, ICT uh, practitioners, and uh, policy makers. As a debate, when we're speaking about the goals, in order to amplify the effect of our communication activities, we bring on board relevant stakeholders. So we have large ICT companies, uh, organizations active uh, in the digital sector, and also providers of, uh, of digital jobs and, uh, and training. The support of uh, 36 pan European uh, stakeholders and 100 of national stakeholders who, on uh, a completely voluntary basis, help to spread the word and uh, suggest relevant initiatives. We also have very, very strong support from, uh, from policymakers. As of today, we have uh, 13 uh, MEPs uh, who are e skills ambassadors and also have uh, a large support from uh, national ministries and uh, national parliaments. In this slide, uh, you can see some examples of uh, films and videos that we, we have produced, uh, including uh, quotes uh, and messages from, uh, from high-level people uh, from uh, the policy and, uh, and the business world. And uh, you can find all of them on our social media and, uh, and website. Provide you with a uh, quick insight in our communication uh, activities. Uh, we are up to Europeans via a central website, consistently updated, and 21 uh, national websites in the country language. We have active pan European and national social media channels. We're all organizing four high level events hosted under the presidencies of the Council of the European Union. So the next one will take place in Luxembourg on the 5th of December. 
also co-brand several events with our partners and uh, stakeholders. And national contact points organize various events and uh, school company visits in, in their specific country. Other activities that I will actually address more in detail later on are webinars, uh, a MOOC and uh, the skills competition. I give you some uh, extra words on the two manifestos that we are producing, one for 2015 and one for 2016. It's a blue book which is widely used in uh, Europe by policymakers as a reference and, and guidance tool. And in addition to this, we are also very active both at the European and at the national level on press, blogs, TV, radio, and, uh, and magazines. webinar is business teacher collaboration. I'd like to, to quickly provide you with uh, a, a couple of additional words on the campaign activity that are specifically digital skills for schools. So a tool that uh, we have to address teachers is a series of web uh, that are managed by our partner European Schoolnet in cooperation with uh, other initiatives such as Scientix, Etwinix, and uh, and uh, you could week and uh, probably you you know some of the of these initiatives. Two has already took place. Uh, one was on uh, educational robotics and coding in the curriculum, and one was on developing digital skills in uh, the classroom. The webinar is uh, focused specifically. On will be held uh, um, in the framework of e twinning on the 9th and uh, on the 19th of, uh, of October. The activity on which I would like to focus is the Skills Competition 2015. Uh, this is an act to find some concrete uh, successful initiatives that were made possible by the use of ICT and uh, the mastery of the skills. Reaching out to motivated and talented young people, business leaders, policy makers, ICT practitioners, NGOs, etc., but with a special focus on, uh, on young people. Our competition is, uh, is up and running for four out of five categories that you can see in the slide. Uh, three of them foresee the submission of views and they are uh, the digital citizenship, digital entrepreneurship, and most institutional career campaign. The category Young Digital Talent will, will be launched tomorrow, and it requires the creation of uh, an online history uh, using HTML5. Why the use of ICT for teaching category is embedded in the skills MOOC called Developing Digital Skills in the Classroom for, for Teachers and uh, Trainers. The MOOC has been uh, launched on the uh, 14th of, uh, of September and is, uh, is now running. It's composed of uh, six uh, thematic areas and includes uh, videos, assignments, and, uh, and resources. And at the end of the course, participants are required to prepare a lesson project that can be submitted as part of the e skills for jobs competition. To, to participate and disseminate the e skills competition which is uh, open until the 31st of October, and also take a look at the, at the MOOC for, for teachers and, and trainers. If you have any questions, you can uh, contact me later on. We are uh, the three quarters of the first year of the campaign, so it's very important for us to look forward to identify what challenges we need to, to tackle in uh, the next 14 months. Uh, first of all, to continue to, to get awareness and encourage Europeans to, to develop digital skills and access to today's job market. It is a slight still not enough. So we can have to continue to provide information on the opportunity that digital skills offer in sectors, fighting also stereotypes about uh, ICT jobs, and also make digital trainings and jobs easily available to, to people. Educators are adopting digital technology to, to make teaching and learning more effective, more relevant to, to the labor market. And owners will continue to, to support the enhancement of this process and the fact that digital skills should become more prominent in the education and training curricula. 
and equipping classes with technology on its own is, is not sufficient to, to guarantee better education. And teachers uh, will, will really play a key role in, uh, in the modernization process. They need to be empowered with the, with the right digital schools, and schools themselves have to, to partner with companies to develop curricula that are really relevant to the job market, providing the pupils with, uh, with the right digital skills, and of course also additional skills such as uh, e-leadership skills. Uh, so at least we will also continue with the, with the support of our partners and stakeholders that are specialized in this to understand, try to understand why women are still significantly, uh, significantly underrepresented in uh, ICT-related jobs and try to understand how to, to bridge this gap. I invite you all to look at the website where you can find more information about the campaign. I'm also to, to social media, where we're extremely active on social media. We, we share every day a lot of very useful information. If you have other questions or if you're willing to, to get involved in the campaign, please do not hesitate to, to contact me. Here are my email address. And thank you very much for, for your attention. It's a wonderful presentation. Um, it is indeed very interesting to see uh, how decisions should be made and how important digital skills are in the current age. Um, and I would like to now give the floor to Rosanna Bolis from CA Technologies. Uh, perspective on what's happening within this in practice. So I'm unmuting you. The floor is yours. Thank you for inviting me and for bringing, uh, for giving me the opportunity to bring a business perspective into this webinar. Uh, so I'm Rosanna Bolis. I'm the Director for Field Marketing at CIA Technologies, a multinational company. Um, 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 the background of why CA Technologies decided to uh, uh, speed up uh, on, uh, on the volunteering programs and uh, uh, include the Deploy Your Talents and STEM into the uh, portfolio of the activities that we do as volunteers, as uh, uh, volunteers. So the, the questions, of course, go, go back to what Francesca has so um, well presented before in terms of all the, the data and the statistics uh, or uh, the uh, match between uh, uh, the type of things that are currently on offer and what the market instead demands. And the fact that uh, there are a number of ICT-related vacancies that would, that would need to be filled by 2020, opening so uh, a lot of opportunities for young people, provided that they take the right career path um, ahead of time. And uh, in, in this sense, uh, we also responded to uh, digital jobs uh, and uh, the in Europe, European Union uh, directives uh, to uh, try and partner uh, uh, education providers both public and private. And of course, uh, um, with the goal of, of uh, attracting young people into the ICT uh, as, a, um, as an opportunity also as a multinational company to uh, recruit and breed the new talents for the future. Um, so what we, what we kept in mind is that the uh, skill and gender gap is uh, still very high in uh, in Europe, and it's very evident, uh, especially if we um, compare with other regions in the world. And especially, it's especially true when uh, we look at the ICT, and uh, so, uh, and, and uh, especially if we took into consideration uh, women and uh, so the gender, uh, the gender gap. All these considerations in mind, uh, we decided to partner with CSR Europe and Sodalitas, uh, who we, we already work on on other different volunteering programs, to uh, make a difference and to bring uh, some um, value to the community we, we work with and we live with. And 
we opted for the Deploy Your Talents uh, program and project and uh, because we felt it was really uh, something uh, that in, was in line with our um, with strategy and with our company mission. The country uh, within technologies uh, that decided to pilot this project was Italy. Um, we started uh, one year ago with a very small pilot project and we, re we really were pioneers. The reasons why we decided to start in Italy is because of the high unemployment rate, a very huge skill, sort of skill shortage risk in ICT, and a lot of stereotypes related to gender when it comes to um, scientific and technological uh, um, topics at, uh, at school and in the university. So together with other multinational companies like uh, Accenture, IBM, SCT, Microelectronics, uh, and others, we decided to partner with uh, uh, Sodalitas here in Italy and uh, um, address uh, the upper secondary schools. So our target was uh, the uh, pupils uh, from uh, secondary schools of uh, around 16 years of, of age. And uh, um, we recruited the volunteers within the company to uh, be the ambassadors of how technology can help change your life and can uh, help you bring, um, build a successful career. So. We ran an initial pilot in 2014 with just one school, and we expanded this year in 2015. One second. So, uh, going back to uh, the major topic of this webinar, working with the teachers. So why is that so important? We find that if you don't partner with them, if you don't bring them on board and you don't get their buy-in from the very beginning, the project would not work. Um, because they need to start to disseminate the, the, the of the project. They need to uh, stimulate the, the pupils. They need to talk with students and the message out. So absolutely need to have them board and to, to understand the importance of technology and how this is so invasive now in our everyday life and how technology can really help students in their working career to better develop their careers and to better create a um, and to create a better environment and to be happy at work. You have some of the comments uh, that we received uh, after the uh, the project was concluded this year from some of the teachers, and uh, some of them have been extremely, extremely powerful. They've been uh, um, very enthusiastic. The what, what they appreciated most was the fact that finally a, a multinational company was able to share the working environment with the pupils, the students. Uh, uh, make them understand the differences and the similarities uh, between uh, the two different worlds and how the, the future in terms of the working future for someone who is still skin is not that far away and that they need they, they to really think what they want to reach in their life and uh, how they should use uh, all the tools uh, that the, the school and the companies put uh, uh, give them to to uh, create their career path. Um, some of the, uh, of the teachers have been, uh, as said, extremely proactive, and they they had a pre-meeting with the students uh, beforehand before the project kicked off. And, uh, um, we uh, met with the teachers separately to uh, explain the project, what were the goals were, and why CA was involved together with Sodalitas into this STEM project and Deploy Your Talents, and to be on board and to be uh, really the ambassador with the students. Then we had an initial meeting at the school with the, with the students. There was, of course, again, um, with the help of the teachers. 
Then we had the students coming to visit us uh, at CI Technologies, where uh, our volunteers uh, had to explain uh, what we do in our normal uh, day to day life. Uh, meeting at school, uh, some of us uh, prepared uh, a, a presentation and uh, brought their own experience. And uh, we tried to, uh, to have a good balance and also a, a good balance in terms uh, of uh, uh, the type of studies that we all uh, had carried out uh, and uh, the uh, the background we were all coming from. So, uh, to make a you an ex to make example, uh, during the, the meeting at school, we had um, a, a a sales director uh, who had uh, a degree in uh, computer science. And she's a female, and uh, she's our uh, top performer in terms of sales. We also had an engineer, he's a uh, sales solution strategist, um, and uh, um, I also brought my experience, so coming from humanitarian background, uh, then brought into a, um, a technology company and, uh, and working in marketing, where it is considered a humanitarian uh, um, type of uh, discipline, but uh, with the digital and uh, uh, nowadays technologies, also a lot of uh, uh, science and uh, math is involved in our day-to-day -day activity. This is a copy of the document that uh, one of the school prepared and uh, uh, gives out and distributed to the parents so that they understand what the uh, the project is about, and of course they meet separately with the parents to ensure that they are happy that their children follow this uh, project and are part of this project. And of course, this is uh, the, uh, um, um, the the uh, the the apex of the of the project. It's when uh, the uh, the students and teachers come to see us in on our surf and turf. And uh, this year we had we worked together with three schools. Um, we had different interactions with different teachers, uh, some more collaborative, others are some more proactive, more energetic, more enthusiastic. Than and that showed a total difference uh, uh, with the proportion of the students and the level of enthusiasm and engagement of the students as well. And in terms of students, we had around 90 uh, um, uh, youngsters uh, uh, visiting us for the full day. Wording so uh, for, for for them was really a an eye opener. So they were not you know, they use technology every other second because they all uh, uh, work with smartphones with tablets. Uh, and they longer go to a library to do researches, but they are on uh, on Google and on Wikipedia. Uh, they're not uh, uh, aware of how technology is pervasive in the uh, working environment. And uh, for them, it was uh, a fantastic experience. And uh, so much so because their teachers were uh, with them to go through the, uh, through the path. And, um, and it was also uh, very hectic to see these students uh, sit with us uh, in, in our desk or in our meeting rooms and bring in some fresh air, some new energies, uh, some new perspectives uh, to what we normally do every day. So they, they we put them into groups, uh, trying to mix the two schools and trying to have a good balance between uh, girls and the boys. And, uh, and they had the, um, the option to uh, listen and to interact and to ask questions uh, to each and every department within the, in the company. So from finance to sales to support uh, to marketing, uh, uh, HR, etc. And then at the end of the day, they all um, they had uh, a brainstorming session that was guided and facilitated by the teachers, uh, so that they could uh, uh, condensate uh, the experience and what they learned during the day. And then presented in front of us, so um, they, 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 they had to elect uh, one spokesperson per group and then bring back and uh, uh, tell back what they had uh, learned during the day. 
And to me, it was absolutely um, illuminating to, to, to see how uh, this group of people who have never been in a, in a company, who have never worked in a work environment, uh, were able to uh, understand uh, all the technicalities, understand all the different facets of uh, what we do in our different divisions, uh, capture the most uh, significant aspects retail to us what their questions were. To finish with this slide, uh, and, uh, this is not something that I wrote. This is uh, a, something that one of the group, uh, uh, they said um, that they wanted to um, summarize their experience in three words. What they were at, at our company and uh, what they are going to bring back and what is going to be a um, stimulating experience for them uh, when they're going to choose their careers. So this, they are summarizing three words, passion, tenacity, and teamwork. And I've also included uh, in my presentation a link to a video that we uh, shoot during the day uh, where we see some testimonials uh, of, uh, of the students and all, all the work that has been done uh, during the day. A wonderful presentation and for sharing your experience. Um, I'll give the floor to Celia. We'll tell you more about the, the same project but from another perspective, uh, from the perspective of um, a national partner that is facilitating or third party facilitating this kind of collection. So, Celia? Yeah. You can. So, uh, uh, we did in Italy. Uh, so, we organized two editions of the Deployer Talents Program. Uh, the first uh, in uh, 2014 and the second in 2015. Uh, we asked uh, to some uh, of our member companies, which we thought could have some interest in some disciplines and above all have strong ICT competencies uh, as a CAC technologies, uh, if they wanted to develop uh, the project uh, with schools uh, and sodalitas. Um, to our Giovanni Impresa program, we work with many high schools, uh, especially in Lombardy region. In uh, 15 years, uh, we have trained more than 41,000 of young people who would join soon the World Oak. We contacted some of these schools, especially choosing them according to geographical proximity with companies that had decided to participate in the project. Uh, to prepare students uh, to the themes uh, of the project, uh, we organized a kickoff meeting during which we explained the main objectives of the initiative, like STEM education and gender stereotypes. Uh, in uh, this slide, you can see the companies and the schools of the two editions. So we made one-to-one -one partnership among businesses and schools, coordinated by a Fondazione Sodalitas Tutor. So you can see uh, some of the major um, companies like uh, Accenture, CA Technologies, uh, Huawei, uh, Shein, ST Microelectronics, um, and uh, despite uh, some changes that are ongoing, uh, Italy unfortunately has a high youth unemployment and a significant gender gap in technical and scientific subjects, as you know. Uh, for example, in 2014, among the 59 graduates in electronic engineering from the Polytechnic of Milan, only five were women. Uh, the same in space engineering, only eight on 67 were girls. Uh, technology is increasingly transforming the world. It is changing how we live every day 
as you know, uh, technology is what fuels uh, economic growth, drives political change, makes space exploration possible, and enables medical advancements. Uh, we decided to join the Deploy Your Talents project. Uh, indeed, uh, as you probably know, uh, the main goals of the program are to increase the number of school business partnerships and reinforce the existing ones, um, to combat stereotypes linked to STEM education in European countries, and finally to give young people the skills to meet the special needs of business. And uh, I think really that is a concrete example of good collaboration between schools and businesses. How we develop the project here in Italy? Uh, we organize the first meeting at school where managers have met students to highlight the value of STEM education for employment and to overcome widespread gender stereotypes using always an interactive approach. After the first meeting, uh, students visit the offices of the company partner, uh, as you see uh, in the presentation of Rosanna from CA Technology, and had an overview of the workplace. Uh, they met, again, some professionals who every day work in STEM disciplines and who showed them how a company is organized. Uh, therefore, students have had the opportunity to see how a company works and what are the concrete jobs and positions provided by the world of work. We know that future jobs will require even more some level of digital skills. Uh, by 2020, Europe might face a storage of up to 900,000 ICT professionals. Slide, you can see some key numbers of the two editions. We involved 10 businesses, 10 schools, and over than 450 students. What have been the 2015 edition's outcomes? To students and teachers, two questioners, one before the first meeting in classroom and one after the business's visit. With regard to boys, we observed that the interest related to STEM subjects has grown and that in the future they would like to pursue a career in science or technology. Girls, however, fall less interested than boys in STEM disciplines and jobs, in line, unfortunately, with today's gender stereotypes in these studies and careers, recognize a decisive role school guidance to the different career opportunities available in industry, science, and technology sectors. These results, uh, we detected the role that schools and teachers should have in such projects. The role of teacher, as uh, Rosanna said before me, in fact, is essential for the success of the project, and they have to be personally involved and engaged in the initiative. They have to develop personally the project, being a really influencing factor for the students and not only chaperones. Without their involvement, it's almost impossible that the project is successfully developed. Another important point came out from teachers' questionnaires is uh, that they noticed uh, that students have understood the importance uh, of the sessions on STEM disciplines, not only for their professional life, but also for personal life. Why this project is important for the future uh, of young people in Italy? Students, as you know, uh, need soft skills required in the workplace, and companies are ideally positioned to train them. This is even more true regarding STEM disciplines that are essential for work now and the future in an increasingly digital economy and society. On the other, always more frequently, 
want to participate actively in school programs and transmit passion for STEM subjects without gender distinction. There are uh, deploy your talents in Italy. Uh, we strive to increase businesses, school partnerships, and to orient students, especially girls, to STEM disciplines. After the success of the last two editions of the project uh, in 2016 uh, here in Italy, we continue to work to bridge the STEM skills gap. We will develop in Italy the third edition of Deploy Your Talents from February to May 2016. Uh, if you want, you can find all the information about our activities and programs with companies and schools on our website, uh, www.sodalitas.it. Thank you. very much uh, as well um, and of course thank you to everyone who has been speaking today um, it was very interesting to hear the different perspectives um, uh, I think it's a it's a good um, opportunity for everyone to hear what it is to work on them level so we need all levels we need the people strategic level like the e-skills for jobs campaign and we need people on the floor to execute the action and we need partners like Sodalitas to facilitate such action. So I think this is very good. Um, thank you for sharing your experiences. Uh, I would like to ask people if you have a question for either one of the speakers that you can uh, write it in the chat function and we will address it. In the meantime, um, I, I would like to talk about something else that we are working on within CSR Europe. Uh, we have an upcoming uh, very big event called the Prize 2020 Summit, uh, which will take place on the 16th and 17th of November 2015. Now, uh, this will be a unique event in which we really um, can uh, business and policy makers, social partners to share the most innovative approaches and uh, practices on uh, corporate social responsibility and also on youth employment. On the day of this event, we will launch the European Pact for Youth, which will be a pact between the business leaders of Europe and the people, the EU leaders of Europe. Um, so, if the pact signed, we make a commitment action, um, and try to get people to work on these topics. A level events with all sorts of people around. Um, we have already confirmed. So, as you can see, we have a lot of high speakers. We have the King Philippe Belgium coming. President of the European Parliament, so CEOs from big companies that will be there. We have the um, Commission uh, from the business world all over, so it will be a very interesting event. And specifically, uh, I would like to point out that we will have a specific session on um, an e skills education in which we bring together a, a very interesting panel and which we work on the various topics. Um, I said I am actually not moving slides, so I'm so that. So you should be able to see it now, I think. Um, so here we have a list of the speakers that I was talking about. On um, on e skills, alongside of several other uh, parallel sessions on entrepreneurship, on rethinking careers, uh, and several other uh, related projects that we're working on. Uh, excellent opportunity for networking and for engagement, for and for showcasing what is happening in Europe. Um, we have over five. 100 participants and as you can see we have already a lot of sponsors 
uh, listed here. And I would like to use this opportunity to invite all of you to it. Uh, we'll receive also about this. Uh, it's a high-level event, and we would be very happy to have everybody there. Uh, but go fast because uh, tickets go fast. So make sure that you have a huddle there. And before we go uh, and close this session, that we have some questions. So first of all, uh, I think this is a question. Why have you chosen MOOCs to the education? MOOCs particularly poor retention rates, less than 10%. Found them successful. Uh, Francesca, so maybe I will. Are you already on mute? I'm already on okay. mute. Yeah, I'm to, to go for a MOOC because uh, since we, we work with teachers, especially a European school that is working with teachers, they, they of course, uh, have uh, always uh, a lot of things to do during uh, school time. Allowing them to, to follow classes and to follow trainings whenever they want and, and from a distance is actually been shown to be a really great tool to reach out to them. A book, uh, as I said, has been launched on the 14th of, uh, of September and uh, we had uh, 2,000 two registrations and actually half of them are, are following uh, the MOOC and uh, for now we arrive at the fourth module and uh, half of them are, are still following uh, constantly this. And, uh, so, due to the fact that uh, this MOOC has, uh, has been created uh, in uh, the framework of the European School Net Academy, so we already have uh, a strong base of teachers who are, who are following uh, the activities that are proposed to teachers. So really, I think that the key to, to the success of, of this MOOC is really this, uh, this creative this community of practice. And so, as I said, it's been, uh, it's been very successful. But I, I agree that a MOOC, if it was thrown uh, in one of those uh, those websites, uh, the website where we provide MOOC is, uh, is often not very, very successful. So you have to, to put uh, a tool, a MOOC, which is very flexible, together with a consolidated uh, community. Thank you for that. I hope this answers the question. Um, Question um, asking: Do you think that developing e-skills for small businesses is more challenging, and owners don't want to invest in their employees? I think it's also for Francesca to answer. Or yeah, I think that it's, uh, it's more complicated because, uh, of course, uh, large uh, large companies can uh, can partner, can create themselves uh, some uh, some courses. And um, in fact, uh, in, in this specific project, we do target business, but we mainly have uh, have large companies. But we also have some uh, some other projects that are specifically targeted at SMEs. Uh, we have um, an initiative is always an initiated by the Commission, which is uh, called uh, Waterify, and uh, this is actually targeted to to startups and uh, small businesses. And uh, we provide when, then with uh, with tools with help. And uh, on how to to develop their business, of course, taking advantage of uh, of what technology can uh, can offer. Uh, so yes, it's, it's more complicated for sure, and uh, they they need more help. And it's uh, it's important that uh, um, that these uh, these projects like the the Waterfly one run, and we we have to to reach out to them because uh, a lot of times they they even have a problem in in understanding that they they might actually need. To to improve the business and, uh, and adopt technology. So it's important to, to disseminate information and reach out to them. Okay, thank you so much. Um, are there questions? Uh, we have an open source for eSkills curriculum that we can access. Sorry. Uh, no, we do not have it, but uh, everything that we, we are developing is uh, is available on our website. Or, for example, the, the webinars, those are not uh, not available, but uh, if you have any questions, if you need specific material, we can, we can definitely help. But no, we do not have open source. Um, 
I received another question to Rona and Sylvia. Um, I read that Italy has good startup and innovation strategy, and I wonder if it could be connected outreach and motivation at high schools. The young people from startup hubs could also used to motivate high schools. Maybe. Okay. I think that it it could be a good idea because. Uh, uh, Schools need to have the testimonials of a person outside the school from businesses, but also from young people that are not so much time in the world of work. Work. Um, so I think that it, it it could be a very good idea to involve uh, people from young people from startup hubs to uh, motivate the uh, students of high schools uh, to uh, to STEM uh, and to to think about a STEM career or. Uh, or disciplines in a university. It would be very interesting idea to work with the start as well. Um, are there any other questions? And I'd like to... Uh, to oh, Sorry, yeah? I have a question, but I cannot send it, so I'm actually asking. And uh, 